Welcome back to 5-Minute Fizz, everyone. Dr. Andy Galpin here. Probably the most common question I've ever gotten in my career is, Andy, how do I get stronger without getting bigger? This is important for people who are in, say, weight-based class sports, or for anyone who, for whatever reason, just decides they want to get stronger but don't want to add any muscle mass. Well, we have a two-part answer to that. The, the first direct, most direct answer is, of course you can. We've seen this routinely across many sports, and this is how people who are in, say, sports like weightlifting, where they have weight classes, they can continue to get strong without adding any more muscle and still staying in their weight class. And so the answer is really two parts here. We have to talk about the programming because the type of lifting you do influences whether you get strength or hypertrophy or both. And then we'll talk about the underlying physiology very, very quickly. So we'll start off with the program design stuff. Now, what you're going to see here in one hand, or one of these columns is the concepts, and as the famous saying goes, the concepts are, are few, but the methods are many. And so I'll give you the, these fundamental concepts, and as long as in your training you hit these ideas, you should be able to add significant strength without adding too much muscle mass. The methods, I'll just give you a few, but those are infinite, and, and you're going to have to see other videos and use your logic to figure that out from there. But first and foremost, we typically use complex movements. We don't need to isolate muscle groups or, or small joints or single muscle movements here. Uh, you can, but you don't need to. In terms of the volume, um, we want to do a small repetitions per set prescription, something like one to five reps. And uh, this is based on what's called the law of specificity or the said principle. So the, the specific adaptations to impose demands. You want to get better at shooting a free throw? Best thing you could ever do is shoot a free throw. You want to get better at being strong? Best thing you could ever do is pick something up that's very, 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 very heavy. Right, but you don't want to do a tremendous amount of sets for that. And so you see that 3 to 20-ish window is large because it depends on a lot of things. How many other movements you're doing, how many days you're lifting this week, how advanced you are. So a beginner maybe wants to stay at maybe 3 or 4 sets. Um, maybe an intermediate might do something more like 5 sets of 5. And an advanced person might be doing something like 10 or 15 or even 20 sets of 2 reps. Well, you notice in any of those scenarios, you're still never doing more than 4 uh, five reps, maybe six at the most per set, because uh, you want the quality to be high. So if you want to avoid a ton of hypertrophy, these low volume, high intensity, by high intensity I mean percentage or one rep max, these schemes tend to induce a lot of strength without a ton of hypertrophy. You're going to get some when you're lifting, but it won't be uh, nearly as much. So as long as you do this and then you control your calories, you should have no problem getting stronger uh, for a long time without adding a significant amount of muscle mass. So, like I said, it's got to be 80 to 100% of your run rep max. It's got to be heavy, right? No doubt about that. If you're wondering how you can get plus 100, you're going to have to watch some of my other videos. You want to try to go fast, even though we know from the force velocity curve you're not going to go very fast, but that's okay. You're still trying to move quickly most of the time. And then, like that quality thing we talked about, you're going to want to use the most amount of rest possible per set. So, a couple of minutes or maximum, whatever that be. And in terms of the methods, you got a lot of options here. Push, pulls, carries. Your classic hinges, presses, squats, all that stuff is very, very good for general strength. Uh, but don't forget the negatives in the eccentric work. Very good too. Really slow, controlled stuff is, is highly effective for strength. Uh, be careful of the doms though with eccentric. Isometrics are also very good. All right, let's not forget these things, uh, particularly for the connective tissue and the joints. I'd recommend checking out Cal Dietz and his triphasic system for this. He's got a very good approach to integrating those three movement patterns. Any weightlifting movement, so this would be the sport of weightlifting, so uh, snatches, clean and jerks, pulls, stuff like that. But then also some other stuff from the powerlifting world, like dynamic variable resistance or accommodating resistance or compensatory acceleration, all that's kind of the same thing. Bands and chains, heavy bands and chains, I should say, rather. You can look on uh, the 55-minute version of this video, and we'll go into that stuff in depth. Same thing with cluster sets, another way to vary uh, how you execute the volume and intensity that are very effective for strength. In terms of the physiology, though, that's the other side of the equation. What's really happening is a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm going to go through this very quickly. You're going to have to watch the extended version for more. But you have a whole host of adaptations from the nervous system. And so if you watch one of my other videos, which is uh, how you contract and how you produce force quickly, I go over all the different aspects. Well, you can see from any physiology textbook or Wikipedia, and you can go through the nerve stuff and look at all the different adaptations, but effectively what happens is you become more efficient and better at activating the nervous system that then contracts on muscle that causes connective tissue to pull on bone and makes you move. 
So anything in that system, uh, the sliding filament theory, if you've had ex-phys class, any of that stuff improves and adapts to strength training. Again, this is where it's slightly different from hypertrophy work, and so you're able to produce more force without having to have any bigger of a muscle. But number two, three, and four are where people tend to forget. And so let's not forget, there are a whole host of cellular adaptations you can get. Everything from the sarcoplasmic reticulum to calcium sensitivity to affinity uh, to the actin and myosin. All of these things improve the ability of the muscle to contract. And so you, you can see there is, is 2B, the contractile velocity. So independent of changing the size of the fiber, the fiber can learn to de develop more force or velocity without getting any bigger. Since force is mass times acceleration and power is force times velocity, if you're getting faster or if you're produce, producing with more force per area, this is strength without getting bigger. You can also change your fiber type. So we have significant evidence to suggest slow twitch fibers can convert to fast twitch fibers. This in and of itself won't change fiber size per se, no bigger, but you will produce more force uh, or velocity. And then also penation angle. So the angle at which your muscle goes into your, to your tendon and connective tissue or in the bone can change. And if it goes one way, it favors speed and range of motion. If it goes the other way, it favors force production. So this, all those things from the muscle side allow you to produce more force without being bigger. Connective tissue at well. This is the forgotten child. We don't have a ton of data on this. Uh, but let's not forget that we can improve efficiency there uh, and even connective properties from that. And then the last one would be biomechanical. So changes in, in, in uh, mechanical advantage. This could be your technique. Uh, this is, could be your setup or your position or it could be something like uh, an increase in muscle size somewhere else and decrease in another one that changes mechanical advantage. So all that comes together that helps you allow helps allow you produce more force, which means you're stronger without getting any bigger. As I mentioned a couple of times already, I will do this stuff extensively in the 55-minute version and walk you through every piece of it. But for now, that's it. Thanks a lot.